As usual, the beautiful Nymphagina accompanied her father King Aesop for a walk every morning. Aesop adored his daughter because she was very beautiful and whoever met her fell in love with her charms. On the other hand, Zeus watched from Olympus the nymph with lust. The god was enchanted with the young Aegina because her beauty captivated him, and he wanted to have her for him in any way. Despite being married to the goddess Hera, Zeus wished to be with the beautiful nymph who was driving him crazy. One day, Zeus could not bear the desire to be with the beautiful Aegina and took the form of an eagle to descend on her. The young girl who was with her father saw from the sky a great eagle approaching with great speed, and both were perplexed to see the bird that descended was too beautiful. Suddenly, Aesop realized that the eagle was the god Zeus, so he shouted to his daughter to flee because in the past Zeus had kidnapped several of his daughters and never saw them again. Zeus took the young girl and between screams, Aegina asked for help, Aesop chased them, and he would not let Zeus take his daughter. However, he couldn't do anything because soon he was wounded and could not save her. Finally, Zeus, in the form of an eagle, took Aegina to the island of Enone, where he enjoyed his love undisturbed. Thus, Aeacus was born with the passing of time from the union between Aegina and Zeus. Little by little he became one of Zeus' favorite sons, to such an extent that the god asked the Moars to make his son immortal like him. However, Zeus' request was denied. As the years passed, Aeacus became a great leader on the island, gathered all the inhabitants, and implemented laws and duties in order to consolidate a small kingdom. As an adult man, the community he had consolidated was prosperous, and so he became the monarch of that island that was no longer called Anone because, in honor of his mother, he changed the name of the island and named it Aegina. Aeacus had gained fame among the Greeks because on more than one occasion he begged Zeus to remedy the evils in all of Greece, so they considered him as a just and pious man. The favors and love for Aeacus were notorious in Olympus, because Zeus protected his son and listened to him whenever he needed, until Hera, seeing this behavior of Zeus, noticed instantly that Aeacus had the blood of her husband, and that is why he had so many privileges. Thus, full of fury, Hera decided to punish the island of Aegina where Aeacus reigned. She could not tolerate that her husband, the god Zeus, was unfaithful to her, so she took revenge on his sons. Hera sent great stormy and sandy winds, accompanied by the most devastating droughts ever seen, for three moons in a row. The inhabitants of Aegina were in agony, for in those days they had lost crops, homes, and other resources that kept the island and its people alive. However, Hera did not stop, as it was still not enough, and so she sent a great plague of lethal and poisonous snakes, which in a short time ended up poisoning all the rivers and springs of the island. Aegina was so infested with this horrendous plague that there was no longer any source of clean water on the whole island. Little by little, the terrible conditions of Aegina killed the existing flora and fauna leaving it inert. The inhabitants of the island of Aegina were dying, as they had no food or drink, and those who dared to drink from the putrid waters did not survive. What was once a beautiful green and prosperous island became a desert island, plagued and inert, full of corpses decomposing on top of each other. The inhabitants could not stand Hera's great punishments and died in droves. In the streets, in the jungle, in the temples, in the rivers, springs, and meadows, people agonized cruelly and died piled on top of other rotting corpses for there were no longer any humans left to bury the dead. Hera felt so angry that she ended up extinguishing life on the island with her terrible sentence, and the only one left on that island was Aeacus who sought the help of his father, for only he had the power to end his punishment. Aegina was being buried by piles of rotting corpses, animals, and humans. I ask you to help me to repopulate Aegina, for a great plague has struck with everything alive, and Iacus have been the only survivor, said the man looking up to the sky on his knees, hoping that his father would hear him. Night fell and Iacus looked for a place to rest, so finally, a deep sleep lulled him to sleep and he began to have an enigmatic vision. In this, Iacus saw his father Zeus from Olympus listening to his pleas, and as he was one of his favorites, he was willing to help him and save the island where he was born, and save him from certain death. Thus, in the dream, a great flash of light illuminated the whole island. On hearing the tremendous roar, 
Yakis was frightened and fell beside a dry oak trunk, up which hundreds and hundreds of small ants were climbing. So, Zeus launched a powerful thunderbolt in the direction of that dry trunk, and Iacus was very frightened because he thought that with the powerful flash of his father, he would end up pulverizing the small ants that were climbing up the branches in rows. A smoke clouded Iacus' vision, leaving him disoriented and confused. After a few seconds, the fog began to dissipate, and suddenly he saw how the hundreds of ants began to turn into little men that grew and grew until they reached the body of men, their extra legs fell off, their black color disappeared and they took human form. Those little ants were now men, and as they grew, they transformed into brutal warriors who wore great impenetrable armor, impressive and heavy shields, and sharp spears like warriors themselves, and they were really strong and big. They were filling every part of the island in droves. There were so many that they ended up repopulating the entire island, which Hera had destroyed out of her fury and revenge towards her husband. Yakis was shivering on the floor because of the curious dream he was having, until at that moment Telamon, his son, who fortunately had survived, arrived and woke him up, bewildered by what he was seeing happening on the island. Yakis awoke from the dream and thought it was nothing more than a terrible nightmare, but as soon as he woke up and turned his gaze to his island, he saw hundreds of men just as he had seen them in his dream. Yakis was perplexed to see the great men roaming the island, his dream had come true, and the men around him were awaiting his designs. Thus, Yakis had regained his entire community, but this time as a gift from his father he had also obtained a great army that supported and exalted him. The king of Aegina welcomed those warlike men and called them Myrmidons, for they had emerged from the ants. Amid laughter and celebration, Yakis understood that his father had saved him once again, his island came back to life and then the Myrmidons gathered, and thus proclaimed Iacus as the first among mortals, and sacred king of the Aegeanets. Gradually he began to regain his great kingdom, distributed the lands of the dead to their new inhabitants, and erected great buildings, which in a very short time made the island of Aegina prosper. Over time, Myrmidon warriors gained fame in many territories because they had participated in several battles where they demonstrated their great bravery and strength. Therefore, Iacus was highly respected and considered a great ally for the whole Greek territory. The years passed and the descendants of Iacus grew and reigned the island in his likeness, and those ant men endured and protected Aegina with their own lives. Until Achilles came to power, the grandson of Iacus, who inherited the mighty Myrmidon warriors, with whom he traveled to fight at Troy during the longest war ever seen in history. Achilles was considered a fundamental element within the Greek troops for the great battle at Troy. Because he counted on the end men, who were the most respected and powerful warriors in Greece as they had the divine essence of Zeus. Unfortunately, during the great contest between Greece and Troy, Achilles lost his life in battle, so in the end, his son Neoptolemus inherited the feared Myrmidons at the age of 12. However, he managed to make the most of his army and over the years, with the inspiration of his father and warriors, he became a powerful Myrmidon fighter, conquering several territories, and leading the great army of Myrmidon warriors. <laughs>